Welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. It's great to see you. Did y'all just notice I, I opened up the wrong stream? Oh, I think we're good. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Welcome back. It's going to be a great episode today. Although I think I have the wrong glasses on. Let's see how it goes. I picked these glasses because I thought they matched this. Maybe that wasn't the right reason, but I think I'm good. Let's see how it goes. Uh, today, we're going to say hello and do introductions in all of our usual routine, but I just want to let you know if you're tuning in and you weren't with us on Monday that today is the day we are looking at an extraordinary um, book. I think book is the right word. You know, for the ATHA convention, and ATHA is the Association of Traditional Rug Hooking Artists, right? This is one of our core rug hooking groups. And they have a biennial event, um, which is like a, a Sauter Village does theirs annually. Tigger is a triennial. Atha is a biennial. So every other year they have an event in a different part of the country. Um, and it celebrates guilds and people's work and different things they've got going on. This year it's in Texas, the first days of September. This is the 2024. And every year, at least to my knowledge, um, they do like a fundraising thing, right, for the convention. And I think the last time it was that little chest, right, that you could make a little rug to put on the top of. Super cute. This time it's a periodical, which I think is even better. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. So we're going to be looking at this book called Handmade Creations. I'm very happy that rug isn't in the title because it's so many different things. I'm so blown away by this. I'm so impressed. Um, it's an extraordinary thing. It's a good, long book. We're going to talk all about it. We're going to look at some of the projects that are in it. Uh, it's very, very different, very unexpected, well worth the money, uh, really exciting. So this is the item that the ATHA 2024 con convention is putting forward this year as the fundraiser. And it does sell out. They always do. So uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but the content for today's show, let's look at this book because it is extraordinary. Um, and if we have a little time, we'll do our catch up from the Monday show because there was a bunch of other things that I wanted to show you when I went uh, into Boston this weekend. I found some treasures. I wanted to share those with you, but let's see how much time we have. I think the most important thing is that we talk about the fundraiser book because if you are inclined to get it, I can't emphasize enough that sooner is better than later. Um, you know, because once they're gone, they're gone. So. All right, Melissa, great to see you. Good afternoon. All set with a yummy sandwich. Oh, that sounds good. And a cup of tea. Oh, that sounds so good. I wish I made myself something. You know what? Lately, you know, I don't know what it is. I'm not a big Keurig coffee person, and I don't know why. Uh, it's not like social or whatever consciousness about plastic. It's more, um, I don't know. I just can never seem to make them right. So I, I stick with the drip coffee because I'm super old fashioned in stupid ways. Ah, I'm old fashioned in stupid ways like making drip coffee. But lately I can't get it right either. It seems to always taste bitter or not strong enough. It's always something. And I've gotten into the habit, this is like I'm regressing, of using instant coffee. Does anybody do stuff with instant coffee? I have to say it's, this is probably just a, a phase. This is probably a phase. But I have been loving the instant coffee. There's a bunch of different flavors. Um, I sometimes, I'm mixing, it's probably not dietary, but mixing it with the stuff that's like the fake cappuccino, you know, it's all frothy and milky. It's, it's probably all sugar, isn't it? That's why it's delicious. That's why I'm struggling with losing weight. Okay, it's all making sense now. But it is delicious. And I can get it right every time because I can add a few more grains or not. It's nice to be able to control things, isn't it? You can't always do that. But with my coffee lately, I can do that. Tea sounds really nice too. Carol P, coffee time greetings. You ordered this book just the other day. You're looking forward to perusing it. It's it's really, it's exceptionally good, I have to say. I thought it would just be like, um, this is this person's rug. Here's this person's rug. Um, kind of like a celebration kind of thing. Uh, look what I did. Let's look at it together. Um, cross, cross my palm with $49 and I will send you some, some things that I made. Not like that at all. This is a really extraordinary book with a bunch of different projects in it from different teachers. And they're not all rugs. They're, they're all, for the most part, hooking projects, but also um, applique projects. So it's like multimedia. It is a super interactive book. And the projects in it are really unexpected. Very, very, very good. I, I'm, I was absolutely... Um, shocked when I went through it. Not that I was expecting it to be bad. I just was expecting it to be 
um, like a lot of other things I've seen before, but I've never seen anything like this. This is really, really good. You're going to love it. And Lisa, great to see you. Lisa, I love your owl. I haven't had time to write back, but it's going to be in gallery night. Friday night is gallery night. So the next time I see you will be 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this coming Friday night. That's not true. That's not true. That's not true. I keep forgetting to say, do you remember that tomorrow is our hook along? We haven't done a hook along in such a long time. A bunch of people ordered the kit Spring Hop. Uh, very simple beginner's kit. It came in the frame. You can still order it. I still have, I think, maybe three. Uh, it came in the pipe frame like the, that you can, you know, reuse with the hook, with all the pieces. But even if you didn't order the pattern or the kit, you can still log on tomorrow at 2. I'll be on for probably three hours, maybe four. Um, and this is, that will be Thursday. I really can't see. March 28th, right? Um, I'll log on at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we will just go through it. If you're a beginner and you haven't done a class yet, we do a lot of beginner talk every time because why not? We're on for a while. I'll be showing you. I'll be hooking, and my camera will sometimes be here if I'm talking for a while, if my mouth is running. But for the most part, it'll be on my hands and showing you how I'm working different areas. I'll try to do things that are different and interesting. Um... It's a number five cut, the actual kit. So I'll also be working in a number five cut. I might throw in some other materials just for fun, just to mix it up. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see We'll see how cute I feel tomorrow as far as mixing it up. But I'm going to stick um, pretty much to the kit because oh, some people bought it, right? I, I don't want those people to be disappointed. But I might do a few extra things that are uh, good learning things for beginners, for anybody. Um, and, it, you know, it is a, it's a free class, right? Because I'll be on here. We'll talk about stuff. You'll see my hands actually doing stuff. You can ask questions. You see it in real time. It is recorded, so you can watch it later. You can watch it anytime later. But, um, you know, you can pop on and say, I'm doing that, but it keeps getting caught. I'm doing that, but it's hard to pull through. I'm doing that, but my strip is ripping in half. Um, stuff like, you, you can ask any questions you want in the thread, right? And if I'll answer and other people will answer because we're all here to help our, each other get better, right? We all are all here um, supporting each other and, and trying to um, be great cheerleaders for each other's success, right? So any questions you have, that's a great time to ask them. When While I'm doing something technical and I can actually show you, well, this is what I get what you're saying. This is what I mean. This is what I would do. Um, so, yeah, so it should be a lot of fun. That's tomorrow and it will be recorded like most videos and you can watch it later if tomorrow's not a good day, but I will be with you tomorrow. And then again on Friday for gallery night when we're celebrating your great work, your projects, your ideas, uh, whatever you're sending me, I've got some great content. I could use some more. Go ahead and send to ribboncandyhooking at gmail.com. And on Friday, we'll be looking at your great work together. So we have two, two happy days right ahead of us. Cheryl, hello to coffee time and sunshine finding its way out. Oh, it is nice here too. It's nice on the Cape, right? It's nice here too. It is nice and sunny. The kids have another half day today. Um, so they'll probably bomb in at the end of the video, but we'll be through our most of our content by then. So it won't be so um, um, distracting and alarming. We'll see. But happy days, uh, happy days are half days, right? And they've had two in a row. So, cause we had the parent teacher meetings yesterday and they're both doing really, really well. So, whew, yeah, so much, so many moving parts, right? Linda H. Happy Coffee Time in Massachusetts to you too, Linda. Anita, great to see you. Good morning. Linda B. Howdy in New Jersey. Look at that pretty little tulip. Good to see you. Judy, good to see you. Got to run shortly. Just popping on to say hi and you'll catch the replay. Have a great day, Judy. I uh, always love seeing you pop on Nature Bound. Feel like I'm sliding into first base to get here. <laughs> that's a great, that's a great visual. Uh, may have to leave early for a meeting. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday to you too. Oh, it's fun. It's fun when you're, you're so busy. Well, I mean, it's, it depends on how you feel about fun, but I, it's for me, I love having a lot of stuff going on when life is too quiet. I can't, um, I can't breathe. I can't think, right. I feel like I'm rolling up this, the red carpet on the sidewalk a little bit too soon. Um, I love it when things are busy and chaotic. It's just my, I, lo I love to complain about it too. It's just my nature. I love that kind of busyness. Catherine, great to see you. you got your, ma your Magpie Times and you just opened it. You're so excited. Oh, I'm so glad. Make sure you're sending stuff in for the next Magpie Times. 
So the next one is Midsummer Magic. We've got some stuff. I can use more stuff, right? I've hardly thought about it yet. I wanted to tell you that Judy Taylor, right? Because she's she's doing more the electronic side of it. I did more, um, submitted, a, I did a lot of articles for the first one because I wasn't sure how much we had. And we ended up having quite a bit. And we cut a couple of articles. Uh, Becky, I kept meaning to write to you with your Latch article. Um, we're saving some of them for future issues that we already have in mind because we just feel like they're a better fit. Nothing was cut because it wasn't good enough um, or we didn't like it. We only made strategic cuts because we thought theme-wise with the themes that are coming up that some things fit better later. Um, so Judy's doing mostly the electronic size of the, side of the project and um, she had a breakthrough yesterday with the host of the electronic uh, the magazine host, right, where you uh, go to it online, it's called Flip Snack. And, um, and she found out a way to, she got to speak to somebody at last, right, the, the great Oz moved the curtain aside and she got to actually speak to someone. So um, she figured out a way to be able to give people access to the magazine without setting up an account, just a password. Like, so that's fantastic. So in case you didn't get her message about that and you ordered an electronic version, just know that that is now in place and it will be for all future magpies. So that will be a lot uh, a lot easier, I think. To be honest, I didn't do it because even turning on the computer, that is turning on the phone. One more thing before we get going. A lot of you have been writing about the, mul the elusive multi-strand braided class, not class, but video that I've been working on. I've been working on it for the better part of a week. It's going to be about an hour and 15 minutes because it is comprehensive. Um, speaking of uh, my, my prowess in terms of technology and being digital and modern, um, I accidentally deleted like several parts to the video. I've already re-recorded them. I'm splicing them together and trying to make the video perfect, and it will be perfect. But now there's not enough room on my phone. Have you have you had this one? And I would love to add the chip thing to my phone, but I can't get my phone case off. And now I broke the screen trying. So um, I'm just going to give it. I'm going to give it a hot minute and figure out a different way. There's got to be another way to get the content from that phone. It's on Google Photos, but I don't know how to use that to edit. So just give me another day with this, and I will have that video up for you. It is a it's a great video. I have, if I, if I do say so myself, it's a great video. It's totally comprehensive. This I've taught the elusive multi-strand many times. There's a lot of ways that you can do it, right? There's a lot of ways that you can do it and still be like successful, but this is the most foolproof so far, right? Cause I've also taught a lot of classes in it for people who pull too hard, for people that work too loose, uh, for people that miss a lot of increases and forget to check their notes and, and forget, the rhythm of increases, the pattern, um, the math part, even for those people, this rug seems to come out the best. So I feel like I've struck on the golden uh, formula for it. And those notes are written up and will accompany the video. It's a free video. It's not going to be behind a paywall. If you want to learn how to do it, I promise it'll be up in the next 48 hours. I've just got to figure out how to get it off my phone. All right, Dave, you have instant coffee on standby. It's not bad. I wish it came in even more flavors, you know, but maybe that maybe that's something for the future. But yeah, I guess it's for people who maybe don't really like coffee, because um, I think the thing I don't like about coffee is the taste of the coffee. So the the powder stuff, the taste of the sugar is is definitely nice. Anita says I hate instant coffee. I buy drip coffee from Starbucks caramel at the grocery store here in Canada. You know that is often very very good. I should really in invest in a scoop or something so I can do it the same way twice. I love the, um, I think it's called the New England brand. Um, they do like, they always do the maple and like the blueberry and all the flavors that are kind of like New Englandy flavors. I love the flavor of those coffees. They do a cranberry. Um, those are for me the most reliable. Sometimes Starbucks, sometimes Dunkin Donuts. See, if I drive over there and they make it for me, it's perfect. That's the thing. Um, when I have to make it myself, maybe that's affecting the flavor is that I have to actually make it myself. Is that possible to have that kind of psychosomatic response to taste and to, and to be that lazy? I don't know. I don't know if that's even possible. Uh, Sharon, great to see you. Hello from rainy and cool Vancouver. Oh, it's right. It's right around the corner. Happy times are right around the corner. Warm, sunny, sunny times are coming your way. April, beautiful day in uh, the no northern Georgia mountains. God, that sounds good. Oh, that sounds so good. All right. 
So let's get going with content. Um, I've got some stuff out in case we need to. I'm debating whether I should run and get my glasses. Let's just see how it goes. I think we'll be all right. Um, I didn't do I didn't do images of the book because it's a fundraiser, and I don't want to show you um, as much as usual because I really, if if you're interested in it at all, this is for a good. Um, it's for a good cause, right? Oh no, what did I do with the little sheets? Hold on. Oh, there they are. Whew. Um, so I'll just remind you, I'll, re I'll, t I'll tell you now and I'll remind you at the end, I've been corresponding with Cynth uh, Cynthia Norwood. We've covered uh, her two books on this show. God, I'm a huge fan of hers. Um, so this book cost $49, um, including shipping. That's including shipping. So, and I have the address. I actually put the address into the description of, of this video so you can see the address um, for sending a check, right? It's done with a check. It's not done online. You send a check and Cynthia sends you the book. Um, and she does do a deal because if, she, if you buy, for example, three, she can send it in a priority mail envelope and then it would be 132 for three. So I just want to, I want to say this right off the cuff and be candid and say, if you're thinking $49, even including shipping seems like a lot for a book. I just want to say this before we start this episode, this book represents, we're going to see how many, um, projects, original projects with patterns uh, by, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how many teachers, it doesn't have a table of contents, but this book is 80 something page, no, yeah, it's, it's almost 90 pages long. So this book represents projects that you can do with the pattern in it for a variety of different teachers. That's what we're looking at in this episode. Now, if you think about it, if you were to take one class with one of these teachers, it would not be $49, would it? Nothing is $49 in this world. Maybe Starbucks, not sure. Nothing is $49 in this world. So if you think about it like that, these are classes, these are projects that are being taught in this beautiful spiral bound book by, by many different teachers. These are the projects, I think these are the projects that we're seeing. You know what, I think, I should have had a V8. I think these are the projects that we're seeing in the book. So let's just take a quick look at it. Let me make sure we're in focus too. And we're going to look at them inside the book too. But you can see it's a wide variety of things, some seasonal stuff, some just for fun stuff. Um, so to me, this is, this is a bargain because it's many classes inside this beautiful spiral binding. Now, the name of the book is Handmade Creation creations, fun projects with patterns and instructions. So there we go. At the 2024 uh, convention fundraiser, I'm going to push you back a little. Oh, that doesn't even affect you. Uh, you're up there. So let's look at some of these together. And um, so this book has been printed 2023, right, in anticipation for this year. So I'm going to read you the introduction to it. Handmade creations. And I just want to remind you that this convention uh, is the, the first days of September uh, 2024 in Austin, Texas. Um, and, and it's called uh, Rug Hooking Roundup. Y'all come. I think that's so cute. Region 9 is proud to present the 2024 convention fundraiser book, Handmade Creations. It's a collection of more than 40 projects from the creative minds of ATHA members. These new patterns, right? These are not going to be repeaties. These are new. These new patterns represent a wide variety of fiber art that range from contemporary to traditional. We know that you will find a variety of projects to recreate for your very own from this book. We wish to express our appreciation to all contributors who generally, who generously shared their beautiful designs. A Texas-sized thank you to Ron Travis, who formatted the designs and created this book. Thank you for your long hours of service to make this happen. This pattern collection is easy to use. Rug sizes and pattern sizes are noted for each pattern. The printed pattern notes the amount of enlargement needed to create a full-sized print. Our, re our recommendation is to make a single page copy of the selected pattern or take it to a large format printer and request that they enlarge it to the appropriate percentage noted. So in other words, for every project that's in here, they are giving you the math, the numbers. If you are not a computer person like me and it's like, 35%, it's like, I don't even know what that means. 
I'll probably go to Staples and, and say 35% and they will know. So, um, so all of the information is in this book to create all of these projects. Oh, Grapevine, Texas. I'm sorry. Um, April says Grapevine, Texas. Oh, um, DFW area. DFW area. Is that, um, oh, Dallas, Fort Worth. That's the um, airport. Is that the airport? Dallas, Fort Worth area. Joyce, good to see you in dreary Pennsylvania. Oh, no. Oh, no. Joyce, are you going to the, um, are you going to the Barb Carroll, um, mo like the sort of the memorial hook-in thing at the Coverlet Museum in May? I know I keep asking this question. You can tell that I want to go. I just can't really justify spending the time doing it, uh, being as busy as it is and that far away. But you can tell I kind of, I'm still, I'm still thinking about it. Uh, so the first project, and this is going to be great. It's going to give us a great format. It's called Star Spangled Flag, starting off with a nice patriotic one. Very pretty looking old fashioned uh, flag. You know, I wonder if the American flag ever had, it never had five stars. Of course it didn't. What a stupid thing to say. It would have to have 13, right, for the 13 original colonies. It is cute with five. It is cute. It makes a nice folky motif. So. For example, just looking at this first project of the flag, it tells you first the supplies, everything that you're going to need to do this. Um, this is a sewing pro Wait a minute, is this an all sewing project? I think this might be a sewing project. Oh, and by the way, this is by Tricia Travis of Country Gatherings of Shivano Park, Texas. Tricia, okay, and then the email of the pro You know what? Can you talk amongst yourselves for one second while I run into the other room? I'll probably trip on five things just so I can see better. Hold on one second. I will be I will be right back. I'm not ghosting you. If you hear a big fall, call 911. Already on my way back. All right, there we go. It's just too hard. I feel like I'm going to start seeing some extra stars if I don't um, if I don't get the right glasses on. Oh, yeah, there we go. This is a sewing project. Now I see. So it gives you all the supplies right out of the gate, and then it describes the construction uh, in great detail. So this is this one is a sewing project um, using wool. Um, and I think each of the... Okay, so every time I turn the page... This is a great book. Oh, Carol, you're going to love this. Um, every time I turn the page, it's another project. Right, with this um, level of uh, information, right? And super, 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 super cute projects. I'm not just saying that. A wool salvage tree, I mean, look at this thing. I mean, how cute is that? Can you see that pretty good? That is so cute. Every time I see an unbreakable ornament, I think, well, that's for us in this family. Wool salvage tree. So supplies, it gives all the supplies, the different, oh, it's all like cute patterned wool too. Oh my God, it's got some little beads sewn on it. Uh, I enjoy using old things like buttons, scraps, etc. So when considering the neglected wool, oh, this is made of selvage. Oh, you're kidding. It's all selvage. Here, let me show you again. And then all the instructions. This is by Sue Rust. Uh, Greenwood, of, uh, she's in Greenwood Village. Um, I feel like I met Sue. Uh, Colorado. Um, I feel like I met Sue when I was there. Let me see if you can see this. So, you know, sometimes we don't know what to do with the selvages of, you know, if you do your dyeing or if you, if you buy, you know, wool and it comes and you've got the selvage, to be honest, I usually cut mine off and, and I don't use it because it hooks up a little bit different. Um, and it's not always, uh, appealing for me. But when I look at this, I think, oh, why, why have I thrown so much of it out? I'm not even sure I've thrown it out. I've probably just put it in a bag. It is one of the bags in the attic or the studio or the basement, you know, that's, um, that, that's ruining my life. But um, it'd be fun to reunite with all those selvages, right? Because uh, this is a great idea for a project. You know, the thing about the selvage that I, I don't like for myself when I'm hooking is it's a bit thicker and it does have that ruffly edge. But the way it's being used in Sue's project, um, she's mis machine stitching it right where the edge is the most ruffly and it's making it have a little extra ruffle. Do you know what I mean? It just gives such a nice texture. What a beautiful project. Talks about everything, making the, the tree trunk, making every little bit of it. 
oh, and here we go. So, and then showing you stuff like this on the next page, right? How to actually do the construction. This is really in depth. This is a project book, right? So I'm very happy that it doesn't say like rug hooking patterns on the cover. Nothing wrong with that, but this is a project book. And for those of you who are getting more and more interested, I know I am, in doing stuff that is three-dimensional or just not a rug, um, this is going to be a great book for you. This is like going to be a Bible of ideas. Whether you do the project or not, say you want to do an ornament, but you're like, oh God, uh, you know, between now and Christmas, anything could happen, not to be depressing. But, you know, if you're thinking, oh, I'd like to do something like that, but I, I, maybe you keep like a little, I keep a little metal tree up all the time where I put little bits and bobs on it, right? It's not really Christmas. It's whatever I hang on it. Maybe you keep a little tree like that, or maybe you have a, a door hanger situation. You hang stuff on doorknobs at different times of the year in your house. Um, maybe you look at one of these and you think, I'm not going to do that shape, but I'm going to do something else. And it's going to work exactly the same way. Um, so this book is going to be great for that reversible oh you have got to be kidding me reversible hooked ornaments uh valerie begaman or Benjamin. um oh uh oh this is amazing so now i'm looking at these this is valerie's project you know it really is a thing lately i'm seeing more and more reversible stuff now i have to say for myself um, I'm not super interested in learning how to hook stuff that's reversible. Just for myself, I'm not. I'm also not, I've never been interested in making reversible um, quilts. It's funny that I just said that because guess what is reversible? This is one of these reversible cantha jackets, right? Um, but yeah, it's kind of ironic, isn't it? But I'm not, I'm not huge on making stuff that's reversible. But I have to say, something as small as an ornament particularly if you use it as like a doorknob decoration, it flips over all the time, right? And drives you nuts. I know with stuff like this, even ornaments on the tree, even though nobody touches the tree, breathes on the tree, walks near the tree when it's up, the ornaments always flip, right? Even if they're like fabric ornaments, they're always flipped and they're stuffed the wrong way and it drives me nuts. It would be a lot of fun to think about making reversible ornaments. That, that actually does make sense to me because when you think about ornaments that you see that are like felt ornaments they they often are reversible so if they spin like you know the fire you open the flu whatever to make the fire some wind comes in everything on the tree does a 360 um or not a 360 a 180 right if it did a 360 it'd be no problem but does a 180 and it's like um this would solve that problem making these pretty ornaments and more patterns to make them right so patterns drawn right out for you. And in the case of this project, Valerie's project with the reversible ornaments, um, she's actually giving you actual size, right? So you don't even need to go to Staples or fool around with your printer. You just, you just trace them out like this, right? Nice. Very nice. Oh, come on. A wool applique zippered bag. That is so cute. Uh, also by Trisha Travis. I'll show you this project. And it's a nice little sort of herringbone background to it. Nice little simple bag. You know, I like I like this very much. I like this very much. You know, it's so good. People make bags, right, with hook drugs. It happens. I have one. Uh, my experience with bags, particularly with uh, using fine cut and making a bag, is that it does, it does want to come apart at the seams, right? Um, particularly with linen, burlap, stuff like that. But you do see rug cooking projects that are very successful. Um, it really depends on the design of the bag, the cut, what the pattern pieces look like, and that it has enough uh, seam allowance, way more than usual when you're working with a loose backing like linen or burlap. Uh, even with monk's cloth, if I were making a bag out of rug hooking loops, I would give myself a ton of extra seam allowance because it, it, it is by nature all material that wants to unravel. They're wovens, right? They want to unweave themselves. So a project like this makes a lot of sense to me because making a little zippered bag, you get the practice of making something that just has two pieces. It looks like this one is actually lined, so even better, right? You figure out the mechanics if you're not a sewer, you figure out the mechanics, and you figure out how to get that zipper in there, right, with with step-by-step -step directions. And it has a little applique flower on the front, which is like just a icing on the cake, isn't it? But this would be a great sort of entry level thing to do that's not super difficult, that doesn't involve tons of pattern pieces, um, that doesn't involve a lot of 
fiddly um, steps, right? This is really a straightforward bag with two sides. So this would be a great kind of entree to the world of bag making because, you know, there are, so let's just follow this thought through really quickly. I want to make a woven bag with a hooked component. That sounds great. Sharon, the, 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 my hooked bags fall apart at the seams, literally, right? Like the expression, because they're hooked to the seams. Now, having a bag that is that the hooking does not go to the seam makes a lot more sense to me. So doing a bag that's like woven with part of it being hooked, like, uh, for example, if it had trees or flowers, those are the parts that are hooked and not the rest, or it's a geometric, or it just has a border. Because um, there's a few kinds. Let's follow this thought through while we're talking about it. Um, oh, yeah, Joyce, there's um, there's a Barbara Carroll uh, Memorial hooking at the Coverlet Museum. Um, that I've been thinking about. If you look it up, it should pop up at the Coverlet Museum as one of the events. Let me know if you're going to go. Um, Catherine, I wish I could find my glasses that quick. Well, there's 20 pairs on the table in the other room. I I'm amazed I didn't trip. You should see all the garbage. There's a claw machine right here that Jocelyn built. There's a pinball machine behind it. My green screen is over. They're all jack trippers in the way. If you're going to make a bag and you're going to make, for example, a little pocket bag like this, um, and you want to do a little rug hooked, hooking motif. Um, my experience with hooked bags, particularly in small cuts, is that if you have it hooked right to the corner and then you're sewing it, um, you get you get the you get the very last row of hooking right right there at the seam, and it wants to come up. It really wants to come up. So I've always been kind of disappointed with because I've bought a few over the years. I've always been kind of disappointed with these. I feel like they're uh, falling apart quicker than I can enjoy them. Um, there's another style of bag that you sometimes see that's more of the hobo bag and it has more of this kind of shape to it, right? And I've been, I've started to see more of a hobo bag that usually does have two straps. Uh, I'm a big one strap person. I can't handle two straps playing me at the same time, but, um, the hobo bag is, a, is it, it, this style would work well too, but the hobo bag I'm seeing a lot more often, it's probably because now that I think about it, the Guatemalan bags that have always been available in stores on eBay that are made from the Guatemala um, uh, woven textiles, those are always this shape. But these bags sometimes have this kind of a deal happening where there's one panel, and on that panel, maybe that's where you got the bling. And that panel wraps around the bag, right? Maybe goes under two, maybe not. But the rest of it is uh, what, what Sharon is maybe describing like a woven or, or, or quilt material, right? But with doing this kind of an idea, and you could do it with the other kind of bag too, maybe do like a um, log cabin, right, of fabric, and then inset your um, design. I'm just doing flowers because Month of Roses. But this is maybe a better call than making the whole thing hooked, right? So just talking about purses, right? Not talking about little zip-up bags like this. But another reason why this zip-up bag, I think is a brilliant entree into the bag-making world is because it's not hooked. It's, it's just wool, right? So you can totally do this. It's just fabric. It's not going to come undone. It's not going to unravel. And you get that great experience of making something that functions as a, a little caddy thing for your business cards you collect, maybe a, a lip gloss or maybe your phone, right? Who knows? Uh, a couple of credit cards. Maybe that's all you need, right? Maybe that's all you need. But um, this is not hooked. This is an applique project. So for those of you, as again, who are not sewers, um, this would be a great thing to start with because it is tempting to make larger things like handbags and tote bags and things like that. Uh-oh. I'm Every project in this book, honestly, uh, Gail Dufresne, I'm not surprised. This is gorgeous. A prodded flower. Um, I won't read the text because I want you to support Atha. Um, if you're interested in the projects, the 40 projects in this book, I want you to support Atha and, and grab it. Um, before it's sold out because the 40, 40 projects is, is so much intellectual property, isn't it? Gail's prodded flower. Now, how pretty is that? Right. With the prodded leaves and again, directions for everything, the quilly center, and then it's wrapped. The stem is wrapped. Now I could see this being like in a Mason jar, a whole bunch of them as a bouquet. I could see this as being a pin, 
right on your jacket or on a hat you know going into fall so pretty so so pretty uh lots of directions for everything oh another cute a cute oh god is that sweet quilly garden cynthia norwood this is one of um cynthia's pieces i gotta show it to you i don't want to show you everything but i gotta show you this one um with the little sheet the little sort of applique faces and they're on a plain background right they're on a plain background in a frame it's not a full blast hooking project but they're standing on a field of quillies isn't that adorable i mean that really i think that speaks to most uh rug making people because of the the wool the bodies are quilly too the bodies are quilly it's just the little heads oh you know the hell the heads look like they're kind of tea dyed um quilt fabric um it looks like white fabric but that has a little bit of a tea dye tint to it i'll have to we just glance through the directions really quick At some of these have videos that support them on YouTube. So that's really helpful too. That's what my eye is catching. Oh, and the quillies are made of paisley in this example. Isn't that fun? She's got them in a shadow box, right? And you can put them in any kind of a, any kind of a frame. A frame with no glass quickly becomes a shadow box, right? You can just set something right back into it. Um, gluing it on, nailing it on, pinning it on, what, whatever's going to work, right? Whatever makes sense. Oh, I love this little project too. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Ch oh, my God. The variety of stuff is crazy. This is absolutely bonkers. Little house for my little house for my big house. Oh, gosh. Wait a minute. Let me see whose project this is. Um, Sharon Smith with permission from Cushing W. Cushing and Company. That's really nice because now Sharon Smith is gone, but she's got a beautiful little project in here. So that would be a huge thank you to Lizanne Miller for allowing that. This is a beautiful little stitched house. Isn't that gorgeous with the full blast instructions? And the next page has the pattern pieces. God, that is so cute. Um, and you know, these are not, yeah, it has all the pattern pieces that you would need. These are not the kinds of projects that are going to take you a month, are they? These are smallish projects. And a lot of the, the sort of theme I'm detecting so far, I'm only on the fifth page, I think. But, um, there, these are a lot of projects that you could use your scraps for, right? And that really is something too. Loopy Daisies. Oh, come on. Sally Kalen of Pine Island Primitives. Loopy Davy, Daisies can be a spring rug. Okay. Background is hooked wool in an eight and a half cut. Um, it took tw uh, a quarter yard of wool to hook the background. Okay, so it's a smallish rug. It's a little. It's a littler one. You can learn this technique in Sally's class at this actual upcoming um, Atha. So she's actually teaching this, and she's got kind of the outline for doing this loopy rug. So it has like loopy um, sort of petal stitch with what looks like quilting cotton, and otherwise an eight and a half background. So she's teaching this project in person at the Atha Triennial, 2024. But it's also in this book. Right. The thing about this book is not everybody can go. Um, I was thinking I, I, for a fleeting moment, I was thinking about it. Um, and I guess I am still kind of thinking about this, too. But I'm, I know I'm going to be at, at Tigger like two weeks later. Um, and I'm thinking about the kids going back to school. Um, but I am thinking about it still. And, you know, for for anybody, for whatever reason, if you can't make it to the at the biennial, this is the this is as close as it gets. Right. You're seeing projects that are there. And you're seeing and getting the same instructions that I'm sure the teacher is probably handing out there. It's well worth it. So there's a pattern for that one too. Uh, some of the other projects I'm not going to show you. I'll just tell you to kind of um, pique your interest in the book. Boot Needle Keep. Oh my God, this is so, I have to show you this. Whose project is this? This is um, Cheryl Bolenbach. Oh, I got to show you this. You know, the little needle keepers, sometimes there, there are tons of Victorian examples out there at antique stores, but they're like little folded pieces of felt or velvet or cotton. And you stick your little needles in there, little tapestry needle, little sewing sharp, right? Small sewing sharp, large sewing sharp, um, doll needle, whatever. But it's a little book, right? With a little boot on it for the Athabiennial to keep that's little, like a little cloth folder to keep all your needles in place. That is too dang cute and some uh different options with how to decorate the boot right the western boots are so decorative um i couldn't find 
I want to make it work. And April says, my cousin and I are going. We'd love to meet you there. I'm still thinking about it, April, that there's a couple of things that are moving parts. Tigger is not. I'll definitely be at Tigger. But, um, and that's in Niagara Falls. The other moving part for me right around that, and the children are going to school. That's not a moving part. But the other moving part is, remember we did the episode the other night with Louisa Creed? Uh, we were looking at her book. She's in the UK. Well, there is going to be an exhibit of, her, her publisher wrote and said, there's going to be an exhibit of her work in the fall. So I wrote back to him and said, please keep me updated because um, it's in the UK. Um, I have a lot of friends in the UK. I have a lot of friends here in the UK. And this would be, you know, I'm not sure I know where Louisa is. I was thinking of Heather Ritchie, but that's not necessarily the same area. I'm not sure where she is, but it would probably be where she's from. Um, I'm thinking about that too. You know, I really love Louisa's work and I'd really love to see an exhibit of, uh, of her work. She's been hooking for many, many years. Um, and it would be like the first exhibit that was a solo exhibit. And, uh, and I'm, I've become friends with her since that episode. She's written a few times to say thank you and to chat and stuff. So I also have that in the back of my head, but I'm still thinking about it, April. It's such a long flight from here, but I mean, it's, it's only twice, isn't it? I'm such a baby because I hate flying, but, um, I'm still thinking about it for sure. That's, that's a big to be continued because my buddy Rebecca Martin will be there too. So definitely thinking about it. There's another uh, needle keep, right? The little books are called keeps. Um, that's a sheep that I won't show you because I'll save that. It's so cute. Santa's mittens, pin cushion and needle book. Okay, so this is another, these are all different versions of needle books. It's not a bad idea to have a bunch of different needle books. This one is the cutest mitten. Uh, with lots of varieties of ways that you could do it because you would want to use that one around the holidays if you celebrate Christmas, right? God, is that cute. Lots of instructions, tons of pattern pieces that are full size. Oh, here comes a nice penny rug by Pam Van uh, Leeu, um, L-I-E-U. Uh, she might be pronouncing it differently, but I'm going to say Leeu. Uh, penny rug, absolutely beautiful. This is This is a classic sort of Wedgwood blue, very pretty example of a uh, penny rug with the instructions right here. I mean, these are 40, these are 40 different projects. That is kind of incredible. Oh, here comes Helen Pringle. Here comes a um, super cute friendship applique uh, little rug. Look at that friendship. How sweet is that little applique people holding hands? And then the full size, the Nope, you need to enlarge this pattern. It could, it could be that size. You could also use these patterns for different things, right? If you're like, yeah, I don't like I don't like applique, but I do like quilting, right? I like applique quilting, but I don't like wool applique. Fine. Uh, I I like um, I like uh, punching or mini punching. That's all I like. You could still use the same patterns for that too, right? As long as you have a line drawing, you're good to go. Oh, I only like to cross stitch. Guess what? This book is filled with patterns. So for you, you know, whatever craft that you love doing. Um, this book is going to be great. There's tons, there's 40 projects in here and most of them are accompanied by a pattern. I am really blown away by this, I have to say. And you know, I, I, this has to be a book that costs $49, including shipping because having just put out Magpie, I know it costs a lot to print something and I know it costs more to print it with a spiral. That's why I opted against it. For this, you really want it flat because you want to trace all your patterns. For Magpie, I couldn't justify making the magazine more expensive to have the spiral. For this, I'm very glad it's here, right? Because this is a very pattern-driven project. You want it lying flat like a recipe book when you're looking at the pattern and trying to trace the pattern, um, trying to look at the directions at the same time. Oh, punched donkey pin. How cute is that? So this is a mini punch uh, that's done with DMC or uh, Valdani. Oh, come on. There's a couple of needle punched things in a row. Very, very different. Punched needle pin. And that is by um, Linda Allen of San Antonio, Texas. There's another punched project that follows it. Ginger Jackson of Prairie Moon Primitives. Prairie Moon Primitives. I don't know if I know that. Oh, I'll have to check. Of Wayne, Oklahoma. Gosh, what a pretty project that is. Not a pin, a straight up mini punch project. And again, with this book, you are getting directions for doing this stuff, right? And yeah, you can go on YouTube and there's some supporting videos on YouTube um, for all of this. 
but you're getting look at the amount of directions you're getting if you are not a, a watch and pause the video learner and you're like i got to be a book learner i have to make a pencil mark after the line that i just did or i can't remember where i'm at this is a great format for you right because this is all all book oh god this is killing me this is just so good this is traditional punch i love to see these halloween patterns okay it's time actually it's not time it's not time. But if you want to do as many this year as I plan to do, um, it might be time. Night Watcher, Trisha Travis. Are you kidding me? Get ready. Get ready. Is that an adorable... I don't always like 3D stuff, I have to say. Because um, sometimes I think, what for, right? But in this case, holy schmoles, that is precious. I feel I have got, I feel I have got to make that. That is absolutely adorable. Absolutely adorable. Uh, all the instructions and the patterns, right? And the patterns for you. This is, this is, this is amazing. This is a massive project book. Um, I honestly, if let's play this game, I can't name another book that works like this, right? This is an all project book and it's all different mediums. This is what I live for. Can you name another one that's like this, that has 40 projects that are all different in it? Different mediums too, I mean. Um, I absolutely love this. This makes me this makes me crazy. Home for Christmas. This is a whole village um, of hooking that go, with all of the pattern pieces in it, right? So it's got little village pattern pieces and it's going to look like this. You could do a whole village for the mantle or maybe for over the door if they're flat. Remember the little village, little wooden village pieces over the door? Um, that'd be fun, wouldn't it? Yeah, all of these are full size. Oh no, you got to enlarge. No, they're not full size. Enlarge by two hundred percent. I mean, I'd be tempted to do them in this size, to be honest, because they're already quite big as mini punch. I'd be real tempted to do that, and I'd be tempted to put like buttons the dog and pitter pat the cat, you know, into the window. Oh come on, the bubble snippet bin, Catherine Buttrick. Catherine, I know you watch sometime. I just love everything you do. This is. This is crazy. Look at this. This is so useful too. Honestly, I'm so, my heart is starting to really beat because this is where we should be with this craft, right? Having lots of different stuff, not just, not just rugs, right? We, we should be thinking outside the box, thinking three dimensionally, thinking about for, for the person who has everything, you know, 200 rugs already made inside their house. Think of some more stuff that you can make right? The, the little holder, the bubble holder like that, or the things for over the door, the mantle. This is great. These are great conversations. At least it's making you think about, I already have everything. I've got no, like Donna, Donna Swanson at Whispering Hills. She's got no more room for anything. She doesn't even have room for a bell pole. Like, I'm not kidding. There's no room for another bell pole in, in her house because her business is on the first floor and she's upstairs. It is so jam packed. Um, that yeah, she doesn't like, she doesn't even know what to make anymore. The surfaces are covered. The walls are covered. The floors are covered. Um, it's, she's going to be the first like ceiling rug maker. Um, she's going to have to be, but this book gives you lots of ideas for doing things that are a little bit different in smaller projects. Now this looks like a hooking project. Brineen Brocius. I, I love her. I love her. So this is a straight up. I think this is the first straight up hooking project we've seen and it's gorgeous. So a little bit of everything. We've seen traditional punch. Now we're seeing hooking. There is a lot. And there's the pattern. It tells you reliably, oh, it tells you reliably how much to uh, uh, blow the thing up. I just said, oh, because this is Keith Kemmer. And I'm, I'm becoming uh, increasingly obsessed with Keith Kemmer. He did the coverlet stuff. He will be at the coverlet museum for that event. That's one of my main reasons for wanting to go there because everything I have ever seen him do just is like... It, shaker forget me not um is like life-changing for me i just love his stuff so much i'm getting a little stocky with him i really love his stuff so one of his projects in here you see some very wide cut right hooking happening there really it's it's such a blend of uh primitive and historic right like those two things should go together naturally but not necessarily because primitive Early rugs are done in a primitive style, right? As like the craft evolved and the tools evolved. But he really likes um, he really likes historic stuff. 
like fractor stuff, um, like shaker stuff, like the old coverlets. He likes historic stuff and he incorporates those kinds of designs into the primitive style. So it's not just like he's, he's replicating things that look like antique motifs. No, he's doing something different. He's, he's incorporating historic motifs into primitive style rug hooking, which isn't the same thing. I think he's absolutely amazing. Speaking of which, remember, um, the Fracture class is coming up, right? Design like the uh, Pen Dutch Fracture is coming up, I think maybe next week or something. Make sure you're signed up for that. that I, all of my classes, the Design Like classes, I hope are great. This one is going to be, to date, my favorite because Fracture crosses over to what we do in rug hooking so often, so much, and so well. I'm really excited. Uh, bunny eyeglasses case. I just have to show you. I'll just show you a couple more, and then I want to do a quick catch-up from the weekend. You know, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll save the catch-up for um, gallery night. That'll be my contribution to gallery night. I'll show you some of the garbage that I bought. It's fantastic. Um, I love this bunny case. Did you notice with this that it is hooked, but there's also a little bit of wool applique. You see the heart and the little flowers prodded through. I think prodded through. Ooh, and there's like um, there's like a little um, strip that tacked down. Isn't that cute? Like almost like a little silk ribbon. You know the Victorian silk ribbon embroidery. God, is that cute? This project is by Victoria Hart Engels, Engels of Independence, Missouri. That's just beautiful. And she's done fine shading on this piece, right? So yet another thing, yet another feather in your cap, all in one book. Um, she's showing you the way that she shaded the bunny because you notice it is beautifully shaded, right? It does have that sort of realism to it. Look at the little cotton tail. It's a nice folky design. It's super soft, but there is some shading involved and that's why um, bunny looks so soft. Oh, bunny. Uh, Love to hook mug rug. Oh, that's a beautiful pattern. Uh, and there's another mug rug coming after it. That's a Western boot. I got to show you love to hook mug rug because that's a classic for all hookers, right? Something nice to put your coffee cup or teacup on or instant coffee cup down on. Uh, all the patterns right here. Beautiful chair pad. Oh, that's beautiful. Joyce Weiss of uh, Straight River Rug Hooking. That's another brand I don't know. I'm going to have to check some of these out. Um, I'm loving everything I'm seeing. You know, this is a different part of the country uh, from where I am. And I'm not necessarily uh, in the same orbit as some of these makers and some of these brands. And they deserve a giant shout out. Um, you know, I, it's, it's seeming to me just looking at this book like Texas is the right place for this hooking because there's a lot of brands there that I'm not aware of and I'm in the business, right? So shame on me. But, um, ooh, <gasps> Oh boy. Okay. Lots of techniques. Daisy the sheep. Oh my God. Wait till you see this. So this seems to be on a plain bag. This seems to be a cutout of a sheep. It looks like this on a plain background, maybe like a canvas, maybe sewn onto a painted canvas or something, but there seems to be a cutout around the sheep. Hang on while it focuses. Come on, camera. Why are you not? There we go. Um, but look at the ground. Well, I, that's a daisy trim, right? That trim exists. I've seen that trim many times. That That's a trim that's probably glued down to the frame. But do you see the grass? That's long stitch. That's needlework. That's long stitch with a needle. How cool is that? You could totally put this on a light blue cloth and just um, needle stitch, right? Und underneath the, the sheep's feet, right? Just, you could put it on any cloth. I mean, you know, when I go to the embroidery stores like um, like the one in Weathersfield, the um, uh, Thistle Needleworks, um, where Judy is and, and her daughter Karen, they have tons of linen and it's all colored and stuff. Sometimes it's super expensive, it's super expensive, but sometimes I buy it because it like, the color reminds me of something like saltwater taffy. And I think, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. This is called hoarding, but um, but I get it for, for a, a rainy day of some sort. And I know I'll use it sometime. That kind of backing is also fantastic because it's beautiful and it's often modeled. Fantastic for doing stuff like adding a hooked component and doing needlework, 
right? And then you've just got to stretch. You could you could even um, stretch it over a punched out um, like canvas frame, cheap canvas frame from Joann's or Michael's or whatever. I, I heard Joann's is bankrupt, so maybe I won't be able to say that much longer. But we heard that about Michael's not that long ago. We still have Michael's. Uh, Hobby Lobby, whatever. But these are the kinds of things that you can work different uh, techniques and methods onto the backing and then just staple it or tack it with upholstery tacks on the back and you are all framed up. It's ready for the wall. Um, oh boy. Caroline Twig, e Eagle's Nest Woolens. Also, you know, maybe it is worth going out there because I, well, that's in Maryland. So that's closer to me actually. So I ought to know, I ought to know that brand. Um, and Trisha Travis, a couple of hooked projects here, small hooked projects. This is just phenomenal. Um, let me just race through really quickly because we're getting to the end of the episode. Gregarious Gourds. Oh, yes, please. So there are some straight up hooking projects in here, but there's a lot of everything in here. I have such a soft spot for the Halloween stuff. You know how I love. Oh, my God. Um, Texas charm, a couple of a chair pad and a pillow. But the, the boot motif, I have to say, um, I'm not like I'm not a real Western type person. And maybe that's from doing too many tours uh, out west when I was a tour guide. But I used to always love. I used to always wear cowboy boots, cowgirl boots in those days. And I used to always love how they were decorated so pretty. They were so expensive, but you'd sometimes see them in secondhand shops too. And sometimes they were crazy colors like turquoise or pink or whatever. And I loved those. Um, and people loved it when I wore them because they could spot me easily in a crowd if I had something weird on like that. And 52 people, you know, I never did the thing with the umbrella because I always thought that was weirdly patronizing and obnoxious. But I used to wear things that were bright colors like crazy boots and stuff so I could easily be spotted. I guess uh, there hasn't been a lot that's changed. But um, there's a lot of boot motifs in this book, right, because of Texas, because of the setting of the convention 2024. And I think it's really cool because you're seeing lots of patterns and lots of play with using a cowboy boot. It's a super great motif. I never use it. I never think of it, right, because I'm not such a Western girl. But it's bringing back really happy memories. And it is super appealing, all of the different shapes that you can fit onto one book. Tons of patterns of boots in here. Spiritual peacock. Oh, man, do I need a spiritual peacock in my life. Anita White of, Over, of Southern Comfort, Overland Park, uh, Kansas. I bet some of you need a spiritual peacock in your life, right? I know I do. Beautiful directional hooking in the background. I hope you can see that. God, these are gorgeous patterns. And again, they're all in here. Oh my God. Afternoon sweet time. What? What? Okay, hang on. I got to show you. Victoria Rudolph, designs by Victoria Louise, Steamboat Springs, Colorado. You are kidding me. Let me show you this piece. It's got lots of different techniques in it. It includes uh, like embroidery floss, uh, baker's twine. It's got quilly. Uh, it's got a lot of everything. This is the line drawing. right? And this is like just a truly delicious thing, isn't it? Isn't that gorgeous? God, I really love that. Oh, I really love that. That's so cheerful. Um, oh, Fiesta flowers. Traditional stuff too, right? Traditional stuff too. Nobody could. Po this is uh, this is uh, Judith. Uh, uh, um, may may may. May I? May I? May I? I I'm not going to do it. Sorry. It's. It, it's a beautiful name, and I know it's got a gorgeous ring to it. I got to hear it said, right, because I'm being a bit of a ding-dong. Oh, Teresa Rapstein. Oh, Teresa, uh, Denver, Colorado. I did meet her in Colorado. She is actually the one with Keith um, uh, Kenner, who uh, is planning that Coverlet Museum thing. She was very, very nice. Uh, I've got to show her piece, beautiful Texas two-step. She always does primitives, right, Teresa, and she's known for teaching her primitives. That is really beautiful. Wow, that is really beautiful. Uh, and everybody's information is in here. Seasonal celebration um, candy jar. How pretty, putting lids on, doing um, punched or hooked lids for mason jars. Ooh, paisley flower. This is smart, too. I'll show you this real quick. Right, using a little bit of leftover paisley to make a, a rosette, like a ribbon kind of rosette. And stitching it so you have a good little paisley flower. You could use that on this surface. 
of one of your hooking projects or you could use it on your lapel. And then there is a bunch of ads in the back, be like really beautiful ads too. Um, I'm guessing for the people who supplied those great patterns, right? They should, they should have that spot in the book. I, honestly, I can't reckon, I can't recommend this highly enough. The projects that I didn't show, I didn't, I didn't uh, not show because they were not pretty. I just don't want to show you everything because I think you'll love having this book. So you see what I mean now. Um, the val now I'm thinking it, this is underpriced, right? Because the value of having 40 different projects for $49, including shipping, with all of the instructions and the patterns, is pretty impossible, right? So um, again, the instructions to send money to Cynthia Norwood, it would be a check, right? Everything is being done by check here. If you want this book, grab it before they're gone. This is the fundraiser for Atha 2024. It is a worthy thing to support this event, even if you're not going to this event. This is about the best thing that you could get in return. 40 projects to work on at home, right? This will keep you busy for two years until the next biennial, and maybe that's closer to you, and you do go in person. But in the meantime, this is, an inc this is such a gift. This is, a, I think, a super generous um, um, fundraiser, right? I mean, I really do. Uh, this is just incredible. The variety is staggering. So I put the information to order this book uh, in the body of this video. It tells you where to send the check and the address to send the check to Cynthia Norwood. Uh, the amount, again, 49 for one, including shipping, or if you have buddies who all want one, 132 for three. And then it goes into the priority envelope and it ships easy that way. So I hope you enjoyed looking uh, through that as much as I did because it's just crazy. It's crazy how many great projects are in there. Um, great job to the ATHA committee. Um, there was a shout out at the introduction to the guy who put it together. Um, huge kudos to you all because this is a feat and a half. And this is so beautifully done. Super, super thick cover. Thick pages too. Like it's a nice, nice quality. I'm becoming, with putting Magpie out, I'm becoming a bit of a connoisseur of quality with magazines and stuff because you don't want stuff to fold up and die as soon as you get it in your hands. Um, this is a really high quality thing, really, really beautiful projects. And besides being beautiful and having a lot of variety, I think these are very tasteful projects. We all have different tastes. Sometimes I see stuff and I go, oh, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a butt for every seat. Somebody's gonna love that. These to me are really classy projects, very, very diverse. Uh, really well chosen and lots of instructions. Happy Wednesday, everybody. I will see you tomorrow for the hook along starting. Let me just double check. I think I said starting at two. Let's just be sure. Hook along. Yep, starting at two. So I'll probably be on for three hours, maybe four. We'll see how it goes. I will be working on Spring Hop. Yours is on, um, yours is on, um, Monk's cloth. I might hook it on monk's cloth too. I just happen to have one on linen, but it has such a small border. I wouldn't send this to anybody, so I might just use this one. So I'll be hooking this along with you tomorrow. Spring hop starting at two. The hook along will be a live stream on YouTube and you will see the link to it also. Same as you do with these videos on, um, in our Facebook group, which is Rug Hooking and Punch Needle Club. Um, I will be on there and, uh, you can ask questions. Same as this format here. I'll be with you for, I would say at least three hours. And um, we'll, be, we'll be working on the different sort of parts of spring hop, the hardest parts. We'll work on some different techniques. It's great for beginners. If you just want to log on for some company and some chat, help me answer some questions that pop up in the thread. That's also amazing. And uh, I will see you tomorrow for that at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then on Friday, reminder, it's gallery night, ribboncandyhooking at gmail.com. If you want to send me some stuff that you're working on, let's look at your work on Friday night for gallery night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will see you in the meantime tomorrow. Don't forget about that Fractor class. That's going to be a great class. Make sure that you are signed up for that. Something else for us to look forward to. And I'll see you tomorrow afternoon, everybody. Have a great